hey guys, hope you all are having a great night. Instead of doing any like performance metrics or benchmarkings or things, we're gonna do a charity build from our local church. We're gonna amp up their live streaming performance and hopefully pay it forward. Stick around, it's gonna be a good one. To get right into it, let's go over our parts list. So as you know, I do a bunch of high-end uh, desktop reviews. So in order to give my local church a proper workstation, we're going to be giving them one of my old first-gen AMD Threadripper machines. This is going to be the 1950X. It's a 16-core, 32-thread processor. It's a beast of a processor, and it will literally chew through threads like it's going out of business. One of the reasons why I want to use that uh, processor instead of some of the other you know, consumer grade ones is all sorts of PCIe lanes. It's got uh, quad channel memory, and of course, it's got so many threads. This machine is going to be used as a web server. It's going to be used as a rendering server. It's also going to be used for producing their live streams. So uh, we need to give them plenty of horsepower so that they can you know, put together all sorts of different types of media and put it out on the airwaves to uh, spread the message. Uh, so that's the processor. For, so for the memory, we're going to actually be playing a little conservative. We're going to be going with 32 gigs or four sticks of eight gigs a piece of just DDR4 2400, but it's ECC. It's ECC unbuffered memory. The reason why we're doing that is this machine is going to be used in a production environment. It's going to be doing live streams. It's going to be doing all sorts of, you know, mission critical stuff for the church. So rather than going for more performance, we're going to give them that extra warm fuzzy of data integrity. So it won't, I think it's only single bit ECC correction. It's not the registered buffered stuff like a server would have, but it should be just fine for what they're going to want to do. Speaking of productions and rendering and stuff, we're going to throw in a GTX 1080. Uh, I bought this at the peak of the Bitcoin mining craze. I've unfortunately got gouged on it, but it's a pretty decent card. It's the MSI 8 gigabyte. I don't think it's their highest end 1080, but it is a good one. The color scheme's not the best, but it's going to go in this black box that no one's ever going to look at. So I don't feel too bad about it but it'll give them access to the NVENC encoder, uh, plenty of CUDA cores in case they want to do any of that fun stuff. Speaking of the black box, this is going to be going into a Corsair 110Q. It's probably the most boring case on the market, but it is a black box. It's got plenty of uh, vents on the side for airflow. It's got access to, uh, I think, some front USB ports, plenty of fans and stuff. So it's a pretty generic case. I don't think that they want to use a rack mount solution, and if they do, we'll probably upgrade that at some time. Uh, but for now, this will be uh, just put next to their, you know, setup. I don't know where it's going to go, but, you know, it's a case. It's black. It works. Powering this, we opted to only go with a 750-watt power supply. Uh, I went ahead and picked one out from Seasonic. It's from their Focus line. It's a 750-watt gold power supply. Uh, I went with that because... We're not going to be overclocking this thing. We're not going to be putting too many GPUs in it. So we don't really need like an 850, 900, 1000 watt uh, power supply. So it's got 80 plus gold, which should give them plenty of efficiency at idle and at uh, peak load conditions. And it gives us plenty of modularity as well as uh, ports in case we want to plug in additional drives or anything. Um, Back to the case, the only downside with it is there is not a lot of uh, spots for extra hard drives. We I went ahead and threw in a 500 gig spinning disk uh, just so they have some storage, but there aren't really many other spots in the case for it. So that is one of the deficiencies of the build. On the other side, though, since we're using Threadripper, we've got plenty of PCI lanes, and that also translates into... NVMe storage. We went ahead and got a XPG, I think it's their 800 something, 800 Pro uh, NVMe drive, 512 gigs. This will be used as the operating system, scratch disk, whatever they need fast uh, storage access for. I think they're going to love it. Um, what else do we have in this computer? I think uh, 
the star of the show. This is going to be the X399 from Gigabyte. It's their Design Air. Uh, I liked it. It didn't perform the best out of all of them, but it has the aesthetics that I like. Um, it's got the Gigabyte UFE, which is decent. It's not the greatest, but it's okay. Um, but overall, it was stable, and it performed well in stock conditions, and that's why we went with that board. Um, I know it's putting a lot of, you know, aesthetics and flashiness inside of this black case, but, you know, it's what I had on hand, and I think they're going to love it. So, uh, outside of that, I think we've got a really good cooler on this. We're not going to go with any fancy water cooling. We just went with the Noctua NH uh, U12S for the Threadripper. It's got the TR4 cold plate. I love it. It's a great thing. I love those ugly brown fans, and especially since it's in this case, it's going to be very uh, utilitarian in that respect. Uh, but everything's air cooled. It's going to be you no know, no overclocking, nothing fancy there. So Noctua gets the thumbs up on that regard. Um, so that's the part list. Let's uh, get over here to the bench and let's go put this machine together.
So remember how I said I wasn't going to be doing any benchmarking? Well, sometimes I just can't help it. We're going to be doing some benchmarks comparing uh, our church's previous setup versus what they're going to be able to do with our new setup. So of course, these examples aren't going to be a direct one-to-one -one, uh, comparison, but it'll at least give us a good feeling for you know how well things will perform once it gets deployed. Um, and to start, this is a 1080p, 30 frames per second, uh, recorded at 35,000 kbps using the NVENC encoder. Uh, and I'm streaming on a Threadripper system, so this is a pretty good baseline as to you know how, the probably the top end of what the quality is going to look like. So let's uh, turn it all the way back down to what they're currently using. All right, so we're going to kind of do a worst case uh, live stream example that they're going to be using. This is a 1080p 60 frames per second canvas, but we're going to be using the super fast X264 preset with a 4500 kbps. Um, as we're going through this uh, Unigen Valley benchmark, you can probably see that there it's had the the encoders having a hard time with some of the motion as well as you know picking up some of the finer details so let's see if we can increase the preset to maybe faster or medium to see if we can pull out a little bit more of that detail all right so we've now bumped it up to the faster preset with x264 still running the same frame rate resolution and bit rate and you can already start to see that the details are starting to come out a little bit better but I think we even have a little bit more headroom. Let's see what our CPU utilization is. We're only at 25% CPU utilization. So let's bump it up to medium and see just how good we can get this low bit rate to look. Now that we've bumped it up to the medium preset, this is probably one of the better presets to use for X264 without just over stressing the processor. And you know we're getting a lot of good detail coming into some of the finer uh, details in the scene. Uh, also, the motion is a lot better we're able to handle the motion a lot better. So again, this is pretty b a worst case scenario, but we're only pushing 36% uh, on the CPU. Let's see, do we have any skipped frames? Let's look at the stats. Yeah, we have no skipped frames or render lag. So this is 100% feasible for them. And all we had to do was throw in a thread ripper. So let's increase the bit rate to let's say 10,000. This would probably be the top end of what they're gonna wanna do and see if we can make it look even better. So we're back at the super fast X264 preset, but this time we're running a 10,000 kbps bitrate, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Uh, the details are probably a lot better than when we were running the 4500 kbps, uh, but it's probably still not as good when it comes to some of the motion tracking. So let's bump this up back to that faster preset and see if we can catch some of that extra detail. So now we're at the 10K kbps setting as well as the faster preset, and things are looking a lot better. Uh, we're only running around 25 to 35% on the CPU utilization, uh, but the, the scene is starting to look a lot more like the NVENC encoder, but there's still a lot more we can do. Let's bump it up to medium and see. This is probably you know the most that any regular streamer would probably ever use. We're already pushing a, a bigger bit rate than what Twitch can accept. I'm pretty sure Facebook is pretty high too. So we're already maxed out on those two different platforms. But for YouTube, we still got plenty of bit rate to go. This is a 10K kbps running the medium preset. You know, I'm trying to pull up the CPU utilization. We're now in around 40 to 45% on the CPU utilization. And for skipped frames, we're doing pretty good. We've got a few skipped frames, but it's less than a percent of total frames. So I think things are looking really good. Details should be coming out really sharp when we're coming through this fa fast pans through the valley. And uh, I think we should bump it up to 20 kbps. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's try it out. So now we're running at 20,000 kbps at the super fast preset. Uh, everything should just be looking gorgeous right out of the box right now. Uh, our CPU utilization is only 20%, so I think we still got plenty of more horsepower to put up a better preset. All right, with the faster preset at 10K kbps, I imagine we're still looking pretty good, and we're starting to get to that point of diminishing returns, uh, but we've got all this extra horsepower. I want to push this thing as hard as I can. Uh, 30, About 30% 30 on the CPU utilization, and I still think we can do more. So yeah, let's try out medium. 20,000 kbps at the medium preset, and we are now pushing into the 50% CPU utilization. Um, this gives us a lot of flexibility because we might be able to, to do some multi multicasts, multi-streaming uh, from our OBS, and we 
we've got plenty of detail on this image. I, I bet you probably can't even tell uh, from the faster preset if we've improved anything. So uh, I think this is a pretty good compromise. You know, we can bump it up to uh, higher bit rates if we want to, or we can just uh, see what other settings we can tweak. But I think this is a pretty good, uh, you know, comparison. So let's do a quick comparison between um, 20K medium versus 4.5K super fast. So this is the before, and this is the after. So we went from 10K or 20K kbps on medium to 4.5K on super fast. So tell me guys what you think down in the comments, but I gotta say we've probably done a really good job uh, amplifying the performance of the live stream. So let's wrap this all up. You guys know I love Threadripper and I am just so pumped to put this machine out into their workflow. It's going to amplify my local church's live streams quality. It's going to decrease the amount of time it takes to just render and put productions out there. But overall, it's going to be a huge blessing to both the people that work in the ministry as well as the people that listen to the message. It's going to be awesome. I never would have thought that me building computer hardware could pay it forward and help other people out there. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon. We've got uh, some shadow gameplay videos coming up in the near future. Land party season is upon us. We've got a lot of cool news with that. Uh, but if you want to watch me live, I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Turk uh, streaming on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday night. Uh, we did this build <laughs> before actually um, and we do computer builds all the time so make sure you stop by uh, and hit that follow button over there too so thank you everybody for stopping by i hope you have a great day take it easy